Okay, we're back. Um, this one is going to cover singleton class creation. So, generally, with um, certain systems, you want an object to exist and only be created once. So it's kind of like a global global uh, object. However, we want it to not be copyable um, and be able to be retrieved in code, but not have multiple instances of it, only have one. And we want to wrap this in an in a easy um, to manage uh, class. So what we're going to do is create a, a new um, system, add it to system, um, a new item. It's going to be a header. I'm going to make sure that I add it to include If not defined, whoop. So let's let me put my namespace. Um, okay, so this is going to be actually a template class. That way, we'll be able to um, define a. Uh, a type that the singleton object will, or container, essentially a singleton container will create a, an instance of that type object. Um, so that's how this is generally going to work. So public. What this is going to have is a static reference um, instance. What we're going to do in here is create. Um, Create an instance of that T uh, type, and then just return it. Now, the reason um, we do this is this is now in C++11. This is thread safe. Now, before what you'd have to do is you'd have to lock this in a mutex. So, if you were doing threaded um, parallel programming. If you were on one thread and you asked the singleton for an instance of the object and it went through the creation process and in the middle of the creation uh, this this subroutine it then switched threads then they wouldn't be um, they'd be desynced so the instance would actually not be created, um, so you might get you know terrible errors and memory um, issues. But this is now guaranteed to wait until the end of this before it you know picks up the the new thread. Um, protected explicit singleton. And we're just going to leave this empty. Um, and what we're going to do is create a, um, a interface. Header. Interfaces. And this is going to house all of the interface uh, interfaces we create um, for now. I tend to do this because it, it's a neat way for me to just keep all my interfaces in one place. You can of course create individual header files for all your interfaces if you if you like, but I'm kind of against doing that um, because sometimes it's just a very small class. That's technically what interfaces usually are. So what this interface is going to do, I non copyable, is generally it's going to declare private the um, copy and and the copy and assignment operators. So
so we declare that private and and we declare this which takes in right so we declare those private um, and then yeah protected we just declare um, I know call people and uh, the destructor Okie dokie, and we don't really implement anything for those. Um, now, of course, we want to include the platform so that we can then export these. Same thing here. My non copyable. Of course, that exists in our interfaces. Oops. Okay, so that's generally, I think, all we really need to do here. Um, so what I can do now is we can test this this out. So first, we're just going to build this to see if everything runs correctly. Yep, succeeded. Okay. So now what we're going to do is create the log manager class. So the log system is one of the subsystems that um, encompass sort of the entire runtime engine as well as some of the core systems. So uh, debugging and logging is part of is a pretty important um, subsystem because outside of just the the built-in debugger of whatever compiler you use, such as you know Visual C or um, GNU C. You're gonna want to have a way to detect crashes and bugs um, during runtime, and a logging system is a, is a good way to do that. It's useful for a bunch of other things too. Um, actually, to to show this, to show actually, I'll I'll show you the logging system of the Unreal um, editor or Unreal Engine, the old Unreal Engine, um, once we do the actual uh, coding of the logging system. But for now we're just going to create a sort of mock um, log manager class. So log manager Um, for this, it's going to be a class log manager, public, and we're going to include our platform and include singleton. Okay, so for this, the way we're going to use our singleton class is we're going to have it um, inherit publicly from singleton, and we're going to have it be a log manager type. But in order for it to access, um, the, uh, protected and private members of, of like, non-copyable, um, we're going to make it a friend class. Uh, we're going to friend it. And there we go. Um, so now what we can do is uh, we can actually 
declare here and whoops. Hmm. Spy plus plus. Oh wow. I never even knew about this, but there's some external tools. Um declare an extern uh log manager reference global log manager and then we're gonna create a the CPP file for this. Source um oh hmm looks like I was doing uh this before and I created one okay so new item source okay here we go log manager namespace and in here we're going to actually declare what that is so that is equals instance so there we go now of course we want to actually export that and let's build okay everything succeeded now one last thing we're going to do is we're going to create another interface um, for any management class that we know is is a subsystem, there needs to be an order in which um, we need to be able to create the order in which the instances um, are actually created and destroyed. Because with singleton class, with a singleton class, you have no control over when or how the um, the executable will release, or at least the operating system will re will release the memory so when your application ends it could release the log manager um, last and the render system first or in the event system in the middle etc so you, you you want explicit control over when these subsystems are initialized and uninitialized um, so what we're going to do is create a another um, interface and it's just going to create it's just going to have a couple of functions um, v startup and v shutdown I prefix my virtual functions with v so that I can uh, easily see that it's a virtual function um, when I'm calling on an object uh, so that's it for that. Um, now we're going to have this also inherited from iManager. And then here, startup, shut down. We're going to declare explicitly that they're, they're overriding. And we're going to define these in here. For now, I'm just going to include iostream so that we can uh, print out that it's starting up and shutting down. So let's build this. Okay, it succeeded. So now what we can do here is we can just include the and we can in here just call um, should be able to just call It should have worked. Hmm. Let's build this. And let's 
test to make sure that this has our include. Okay, it does. Okay, let's open this. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Uh, we can call the startup. And let's compile. And okay, error list, unresolved external symbol. Oh, okay, so that's because um, this needed to be exported for now. Actually, in the in the um, actual engine, once we write the application class, we're not going to export this. It's just going to stay part of the um, part of the engine internally. So as you can see, it's starting up and shutting down, and this is uh, a single instance, um, and we can modify it however we want, and it's just, it's always going to be that same instance, uh, and you can't create a new one or anything like that. Um, so that's a quick introductory to uh, singletons um, with a quick singleton class, um, and how we're going to restrict the use of them. If you're going to create a singleton, it's singleton it should really only be the manager classes that are singleton objects and you should generally create an extern variable of it, define it in the CPP and then use it internally in the engine um, and that's it so that's it for uh, this video